Welcome to our NCLEX practice test. This test has 75 questions on topics you'll see in the real exam. These questions will help you better understand the concepts that will be tested on the exam. Let's get started. 1. A patient is asked to abduct her arms. Which of the following accurately describes her arm movement? A. She moves her arms away from her trunk. B. She moves her arms toward her trunk. C. She rotates her arms at the wrists while holding them toward her feet. D. She crosses her arms over her abdomen. Correct answer. She moves her arms away from her trunk. Abduction means to move away from the midline. Adduction means to add to the midline or bring it closer. 2. Which of the following sets of word parts means pain? A. Dinia and algia. B. A. And and dash. C. I. A. And A. C. D. Pathy and osis. Correct answer. A. Dinia and algia. The meaning, pain, can be derived from the following word parts, dis dash, algia, and dinia. 3. That a public health nurse discovers that many of the children in the neighborhood where she works are developing lead toxicity. She implements a program to screen for lead exposures among clients in the community. This is an example of a social justice. B. Policy resources. C. Autonomy. D. Moral justification. Correct answer. Social justice. Social justice involves working on behalf of others to find solutions to current issues and is not prohibited by class, gender, or race. Nurses perform acts of social justice when they see an issue or a wrong and work to solve it in order to provide a workable solution for those involved. Social justice determines that everyone deserves fair treatment and should have the opportunities for better care. 4. The community health nurse is educating a group of middle-aged men about recommended health screenings. Which of the following statements indicates the client has understood the recommended health screenings for a 50-year-old male? A. I should get a testicular exam every year. B. I should get a colonoscopy every five years. C. I should get a prostate-specific antigen test every five years. D. All of the above. Correct answer. A. I should get a testicular exam every year. The recommendations suggest that. A 50-year-old male should get a testicular exam every year beginning at the age of 20. A prostate-specific antigen test should be started at age 50 if indicated by a physician for adult males. Colonoscopies should be completed every 10 years. Prostate digital exams should be performed yearly after 50 years old if there are no other risk factors. 5. Which situation might require an occupational health nurse consult? A. A nurse is injured from using incorrect body mechanics to lift a client. B. A nurse receives a subpoena to testify in court about a client's case. C. A client who has been injured in a diving accident needs assistance with planning rehabilitation and surgery. D. A nursing unit is implementing a new electronic health record system. Correct answer. A. A nurse is injured from using incorrect body mechanics to lift a client. Occupational health nurses assess the work environment and educate those working about safety with practice and infection control. When an injury or exposure occurs, the occupational health nurse may need to be notified in order to document the situation and help the employee access care or treatment. 6. Which of the following is the most appropriate example of anticipatory guidance for a 16-year-old who has been hospitalized for an ankle fracture? A. Changes associated with puberty. B. Driving and staying safe. C. The health hazards of smoking. D. Social media influences. Correct answer. B. Driving and staying safe. Anticipatory guidance is an educational process that provides information important to a client's situation. The nurse anticipates that the client will need the information based on his background, such as his life stage and diagnosis. 
A 16-year-old teen that receives care for a fractured ankle will most likely need anticipatory guidance related to overall safety and driving, as this is age-appropriate and may prevent future injuries. Seventh, Becky is a 17-year-old type I diabetic who has been admitted for her third episode of Diabetic Ketoacidosis, DKA, since being diagnosed last year. She states that she hates feeling different than her friends and refuses to take her insulin as recommended. What would be the most helpful action for Becky? Scold her for not taking her insulin. B. Recommend that she use an insulin pump. C. Contact the local support group for diabetic teens. D. Tell her parents they must provide more strict oversight. Correct answer. C. Contact the local support group for diabetic teens. Contacting the local support group for diabetic teens to see if another diabetic teenager would be available to provide support for Becky would be the most helpful action. Such collaboration would provide her with the ability to identify with someone in her peer group who faces the same issues she does, decreasing her feeling of isolation and being different. 8. Which of the following is a true statement about assessing blood pressure by palpation? A. Only the diastolic blood pressure can be assessed through palpation. B. The palpation technique is most useful for infants and small children. C. Hypertension is a common condition that might need to be assessed through blood pressure palpation. D. Only the systolic blood pressure can be assessed through palpation. Correct answer. D. Only the systolic blood pressure can be assessed through palpation. Palpating a blood pressure may be necessary in some clients with pressures that are too low to be heard through a traditional stethoscope. Clients who have fluid volume deficits or decreased cardiac outputs may need blood pressure assessed through palpation. When performing this maneuver, only the systolic blood pressure can be assessed. 9. A student health nurse working at a college is discussing lifestyle choices with a female client who came to the office today. The female client is sexually active and informs the nurse, I use condoms every time, as far as I know. The student reveals that she is not sexually active exclusively with one person. Which of the following topics should the nurse include in her teaching when educating the client? A. Information on STI testing. B. Substance use disorders. C. Contraception. D. All of the above. E. Both A and C only. Correct answer. D. All of the above. Based on the information the client provides to the nurse, it is important that the nurse take the opportunity to discuss the client's lifestyle choices. The nurse in this situation would want to discuss contraception to prevent an unwanted pregnancy and STI testing. The client states she uses condoms as far as she knows. This is a red flag to the nurse that substance use may play a role in the situation. Therefore, information on substance abuse should be included. 10. A nurse is assisting a pregnant client who is having an amniocentesis. Which of the following statements by the nurse indicates the correct teaching for this procedure? A. I'm going to help you lie flat on your back for this. B. Don't worry, I'm sure everything will be alright. C. I will need to help you remove your shirt for this procedure. D. And now that the procedure is finished, I will put a small bandage over the puncture site. Correct answer. D. Now that the procedure is finished, I will put a small bandage over the puncture site. An amniocentesis is performed to draw amniotic fluid from the sac around the fetus during pregnancy. It may be analyzed for certain disorders or complications associated with pregnancy. Following the procedure, the nurse should wash the client's abdomen and place a small bandage over the puncture site. 11. A nursing care plan states, assist the patient to the bedside commode PRN. When will this patient get this assistance to the commode? If, whenever needed. B. At bedtime. C. During the night. D. During the day. Correct answer, eh, whenever needed. PRN is the acceptable abbreviation for whenever needed or whenever necessary. 
12. You see a sign over Mary Jones' bed when you arrive at 7 a.m. to begin your day. Shift. The sign says, NPO. Miss Jones is on a regular diet. The patient asks for milk and some crackers. You underscore. A. Can give her the milk but not the crackers. B. Can give her both the milk and the crackers. C. Can give her the crackers but not the milk. D. Cannot give her anything to eat or drink. Correct answer. D. Cannot give her anything to eat or drink. NPO is the acceptable abbreviation for nothing by mouth. Mary Jones can have nothing to eat or drink. 13. A case manager is planning a discharge for a patient after being admitted to the hospital for an exacerbation of COPD. What information would be a priority in identifying the home care needs for the patient? A. Blood pressure. B. Ability to perform ADLs. C. Transportation to physician visits. D. Obtain pulse ox when ambulating. Correct answer. D. Obtain pulse ox when ambulating. All of the above information would need to be included in the discharge planning for this patient, however, the priority for this patient is oxygenation. The case manager must determine if oxygen will be required at home for the patient. Maslow's hierarchy of needs could be used in prioritizing patient needs. 14. Match the abbreviation with the correct definition, at bid, at bedtime. B. Tid, tomorrow. C. A. C. Before meals. D. P. C. Patient care. Correct answer. C. A. C. Before meals. The abbreviation A. C. means before meals. Bid is twice a day. Tid is three times a day and P. C. is after meals. 15. Which is not an acceptable abbreviation. A. D. Slash C. B. Tid. C. Bid. D. Q. I. D. Correct answer. A. D. Slash C. D. Slash C is not an acceptable abbreviation. It can be confused with both discharge and discontinue. 16. You are taking Mr. D's blood pressure. The first sound that you hear is at 162 and the second sound that you hear is at 86. You should document and report that the blood pressure is underscore. A. 86 slash 162. B. Irregular and high. C. 162 slash 86. D. Normal for people of all ages. Correct answer. C. 162 slash 86. You should document and report that the blood pressure measurement. For Mr. D is 162 slash 86. The first sound that is heard is the systolic reading, or the top number, and the second sound that is heard is the diastolic reading, or the bottom number. Blood pressures are not observed as irregular, pulses can be irregular. This blood pressure is not normal for people of all ages. It is high. 17. Your elderly patient has a temperature of 98.5 degrees. Is there anything else that a nurse should do? in addition to documenting this temperature. A. No, this temperature is within normal limits. B. No, this temperature is normally hyperthermic. C. Yes, this temperature is highly hyperthermic. D. Yes, this temperature is highly hypothermic. Correct answer. Heck no, this temperature is within normal limits. No, there is nothing else that a nurse should do. This temperature, for an elderly patient, is within normal limits. 18. The abbreviation AC is defined as underscore. A. Before the meal. B. With the meal. C. After the meal. D. Anticorpus. Correct answer. A. Uh, before the meal. The abbreviation AC is defined as before the meal. 19. The abbreviation PC is defined as underscore. A. Before the meal. B. With the meal. C. After the meal. D. Post corpi. Correct answer. C. After the meal.
The abbreviation PC is defined as after the meal. 20. At the beginning of the shift, a nurse receives report for her daily assignment. Which of the following situations should the nurse give first priority? A. A diabetic client with a blood glucose level of 195 mg per deciliter. B. A family member of an elderly client who has questions. C. A client with COPD with an oxygen saturation of 84%. D. A client who requires assistance to use the bathroom. Correct answer. C. A client with COPD with an oxygen saturation of 84%. When prioritizing needs of clients, the nurse must begin with the unstable client or manage conditions that affect airway, breathing, or circulation first. The client with COPD has a condition that affects breathing and is exhibiting decreased oxygen saturation levels, therefore, this client should be the first priority. 21. Mr. W has orders for a physical therapy consult. The nurse contacts the appropriate department but 12 hours later, no one has come to see the client. Which is the most appropriate action of the nurse? A. Call the supervisor and file a complaint against the physical therapy department. B. Contact the physician to notify him that the orders were not carried out. C. Assess the client's activity level by assisting with ambulation using a gait belt. D. Contact the physical therapy department again and repeat the order. Correct answer. D. Contact the physical therapy department again and repeat the order. Nurses must typically work as part of a larger interdisciplinary team that involves collaboration with other professionals. In order to fulfill the client's needs, communication between disciplines should remain respectful, with clear directions about each discipline's responsibilities. Communication between all parties minimizes confusion about the client's care. 22. A drug form in which medication particles are instilled into a liquid and combined through agitation of the solution is called suspension. B. Elixir. C. Syrup. D. Tincture. Correct answer. F. Suspension. A suspension is a type of medicine that combines medication particles with a liquid solution. When not administered, medication particles within the suspension may settle to the bottom, requiring the nurse to shake the solution to mix. Suspensions are typically given as oral solutions. 23. Following a dose of medication, a client develops inflamed mucous membranes and nasal discharge. What type of minor reaction is this client experiencing? A. Urticaria B. Pruritus C. Hives D. Rhinitis Correct answer, D. Rhinitis Rhinitis may occur as a mild reaction following some types of medication administration. Rhinitis involves itchy or inflamed mucous membranes, particularly around the eyes, nose, and mouth. The client may also develop swelling of the nasal passages or clear discharge. 24. Mr. Y is Receiving medication through a catheter that has been placed into the subarachnoid space of his spinal column. What route of medication administration is this called? A. Intrapleural B. Intraosseous C. Intrathecal D. Intraperitoneal Correct answer C. Intrathecal. Medications administered through the intrathecal route are given through a catheter that has been placed into the subarachnoid space of the spinal column. These medications are given into cerebrospinal fluid, often for pain control. Placement of an intrathecal catheter is typically done by a trained physician or advanced practice nurse. 25. A client is having difficulties swallowing a large tablet of medication. Which of the following interventions from the nurse may best assist this client? A. Help the client to lie down while taking the medication. B. Obtain an order to give the medication intravenously instead. C. Dissolve the tablet in a glass of pineapple juice. D. Assist the client to drink a full glass of water when taking the tablet. Correct answer. D. Assist the client to drink a full glass of water when taking the tablet.
When a client has trouble swallowing a large tablet, the nurse can assist him by helping him to sit in an upright position and to drink a full glass of water while taking the medication. If the client still has difficulty, the nurse may ask the physician if the medication can be crushed and mixed with a soft food, such as applesauce. 26. A nurse is attempting to find the ventral gluteal muscle to administer an intramuscular medication. In which method does the nurse find this site? A. The nurse places her palm on the client's hip at the level of the greater trochanter, pointing the thumb toward the client's groin and administering the injection between the first and second fingers. B. The nurse measures two finger widths below the acromion process and administers the injection at this point. C. The nurse estimates the upper and outer quadrant of the buttock and gives the injection three inches below the iliac crest. D. The nurse grasps the muscle of the upper thigh and administers the injection six inches above the knee. Correct answer. A. The nurse places her palm on the client's hip at the level of the greater trochanter, pointing the thumb toward the client's groin and administering the injection between the first and second fingers. The ventral gluteal muscle is a location for an intramuscular injection that can be found by placing a palm on the client's hip. The index finger should point toward the anterior iliac spine, while the thumb should point toward the client's groin. The nurse administers the injection between the first and second fingers in this position. 27. A nurse is administering total parenteral nutrition for a client. The solution contains 12% dextrose and 5% amino acids. Which of the following sites is most appropriate to administer this solution? F. Left radial arterial line. B. Right subclavian catheter. C. Left peripheral intravenous catheter. D. Both A and C. Correct answer. B. Right subclavian catheter. When administering total parenteral nutrition solutions, a mixture that contains greater than 10% dextrose should be given through a central line to reduce the incidence of blood clot formation. A subclavian line is a type of central line that is large enough to receive this type of fluid. 28. Mr. S is complaining of pain following a surgical procedure. The nurse checks his orders and finds that he has an order from a paradine 25 mg PRNQ 4 hours for shivering. What is the next action of the nurse? A. Give 25 mg of the medication and use it for pain. B. Contact the pharmacy to clarify the purpose of the medication. C. Check the medication record for other PRN pain medications. D. Administer 12.5 mg of the medication and document that the client was shivering. Correct answer. C. Check the medication record for other PRN pain medications. When administering medications on a PRN basis, the nurse must give the medication. According to its indications and in the time allotted. If a medication is ordered for symptoms other than what the client is having, the nurse should check for other, more appropriate medications to manage the symptoms or follow the facility policy for administering the PRN drug. 29. Which of the following medications is an example of an adjuvant drug? A. Ibuprofen. B. Fentanyl. C. Hydromorphone. D. Hydroxyzine. Correct answer. D. Hydroxyzine. Hydroxyzine, Vistral, is an example of an adjuvant drug. Adjuvants are those drugs that work with analgesics to improve pain relief. For example, a nurse may administer an adjuvant that works as a muscle relaxant in addition to a narcotic analgesic for a client who is complaining of pain and who has a lot of tension. 30. Which of the following is a potential complication of administering a dorsogluteal intramuscular injection? A. Striking the bone of the humerus with the needle. B. Inserting the needle into the sciatic nerve. C. Causing extravasation of medication into the subcutaneous tissues. D. Causing an air embolus in the superior iliac artery. Correct answer. B. Inserting the needle into the sciatic nerve. The dorsogluteal site, which is found on the upper and outer quadrant of the buttocks, may be a site for administration of intramuscular medications. 
However, the nurse must assess the site carefully before administration to avoid hitting the sciatic nerve that runs near this site and along the length of the leg. Inserting the needle into the sciatic nerve can cause significant nerve pain, numbness, or tingling in the buttock and the leg. 31. A nurse is preparing to administer a rectal suppository to a client. After applying gloves, checking the client's identification band, and closing the door, what is the next step of the nurse? A. Assist the client to lie in the Trendelenburg position. B. Unwrap the suppository and lubricate the end. C. Remove gloves and wash hands. D. Record the date, time, and amount of suppository to give. Correct answer. B. Unwrap the suppository and lubricate the end. Once the nurse has prepared the supplies needed to give a client a suppository, she should assist the client to lie in the SIMS position, unwrap the suppository, and lubricate the end of the medication to facilitate easier insertion. Following administration, the nurse removes her gloves and documents the date, time, and amount given. 32. Mr. F. has been prescribed isocarboxazid, a monoamine oxidase inhibitor, as part of treatment for depression. Which of the following foods should the nurse instruct the client to avoid while taking this drug? A. Wine B. Sweet potatoes C. Spinach D. Apple juice Correct answer, wine. Monoamine oxidase inhibitors are a type of antidepressant drug that may have negative interactions with certain foods. Clients who take these drugs should be taught to avoid foods that contain tyramine, such as wine, beer, pickled foods, and some types of cheeses. Contact with these foods while taking this medication can cause severely high blood pressure. 33. Which of the following situations might warrant a laboratory magnesium level? A. Hyperthyroidism B. Arthritis C. Ulcerative colitis D. Depression. Correct answer. C. Ulcerative colitis. Ulcerative colitis causes abdominal pain, fever, diarrhea, and weight loss for those clients suffering from this condition. The condition may affect how the body absorbs certain nutrients, such as magnesium. Clients admitted with chronic gastrointestinal conditions should be checked for electrolyte imbalances related to improper digestion. 34. A client with asthma is being admitted for breathing difficulties. His arterial blood gas results are pH 7.26, PCO 249, POW 290, and HCO 321. Which of the following best describes this condition? A. Uncompensated respiratory acidosis. B. Compensated respiratory alkalosis. C. Uncompensated metabolic acidosis. D. Compensated metabolic alkalosis. Correct answer, A. Uncompensated. Respiratory acidosis. Acidosis can occur in a client who is having breathing difficulties when the body retains excess CO2. The normal range of PCO2 from an arterial source is between 35 and 45 millimeters of mercury. This client has an elevated level of PCO2 at 49 millimeters of mercury. Additionally, the pH should have a level between 7.35 and 7.45. This level of 7.26 indicates acidosis that is uncompensated because the body can no longer maintain an adequate level of pH to manage the elevated levels of PCO2. 35. Mrs. O is seen for follow-up after an episode of acute pancreatitis. Her physician orders a serum amylase level and the result is 200 u l Which of the following is a potential cause of this result? A. The client is pregnant. B. The client has hypertension. C. The client is in renal failure. D. The client has pancreatitis. Correct answer. D. The client has pancreatitis. An elevated serum amylase level following pancreatitis may mean the client is experiencing another attack of the condition. Serum amylase may be ordered as part of routine follow-up after pancreatitis. 
Elevated levels may also mean other, related gastrointestinal conditions, such as cholecystitis or an intestinal blockage, so further testing should be performed on this client. 36. Which of the following situations warrants a measurement for orthostatic hypotension? A. A 36-year-old male with a spinal injury. B. An 86-year-old female with significantly altered mental status. C. A 58-year-old female with near syncope. D. A 41-year-old male with acute deep vein thrombosis. Correct answer. C. A 58-year-old female with near syncope. Orthostatic hypotension occurs when a client's blood pressure drops greater than 20 mm of mercury systolic when rising from a sitting or lying position to standing. Clients at greatest risk of orthostatic hypotension are those with syncope or near syncope, clients with symptomatic hypovolemia, and clients who are considered to be at risk for falls. 37. A nurse is caring for a client who has a sodium level of 126 milliequivalent slash L. Which of the following symptoms should the nurse expect to see with this client? A. Anystagmus. B. Orthostatic hypotension. C. Hallucinations. D. Dry skin. Correct answer. C. Hallucinations. A client with a sodium level of 126 milliequivalent slash L has significant hyponatremia. The nurse would expect to see mental status changes in this client that could include confusion, hallucinations, or coma. Hyponatremia may also manifest as headache, irritability, muscle weakness, or seizures. 38. A 58-year-old client is being tested for rheumatoid arthritis. Her physician orders an erythrocyte sedimentation rate, ESR. Which of the following results is most likely to be associated with arthritis? A. 5 mm per hour, B. 12 mm per hour, C. 28 mm per hour, D. 40 mm per hour, correct answer, D. 40 mm per hour. The erythrocyte sedimentation rate, ESR, measures levels of inflammation in the body. The results of the ESR may be higher than normal in clients suffering from some autoimmune conditions, such as rheumatoid arthritis. A normal ESR for a woman above 50 is less than 30 mm per hour, therefore, a client of this age with rheumatoid arthritis may have a higher level, such as 40 mm per hour, 39. Which of the following statements best describes compartment syndrome? A. An injury causes pain and tingling that starts in the buttock and travels down the leg. B. An injury causes swelling within muscle tissue that leads to anoxia of nerves and muscles. C. An injury causes permanent flexion of the interphalangeal joint, resulting in deformity. D. An injury causes pain and swelling of the median plantar nerve. Correct answer. B. An injury causes swelling within muscle tissue that leads to anoxia of nerves and muscles. Swelling and pressure that increases within the muscle compartment is known as compartment syndrome. The condition may be related to an injury, such as application of a cast after a fracture. If left untreated, compartment syndrome can lead to decreased oxygen to the nerves and muscles of the affected area, causing necrosis. 40. Mrs. G is seen for follow-up after testing for chronically high blood glucose levels. Her physician diagnoses her with type 1 diabetes. Which of the following information is part of this client's education about this condition? A. Type 1 diabetes occurs from increased carbohydrate intake and decreased exercise. B. Type 1 diabetes is treated through diet and exercise. C. Type 1 diabetes occurs from destruction of beta cells in the pancreas. D. Type 1 diabetes results in the cells rejecting the body's insulin. Correct answer. C. Type 1 diabetes occurs from destruction of beta cells in the pancreas. Type 1 diabetes occurs when the beta cells in the pancreas are unable to produce enough insulin. Insulin is necessary to control glucose in the bloodstream and to help the body's cells utilize glucose for energy. Part of education about diabetes is differentiating the causes of each type so the client can be prepared for treatment.
41. Mrs. F has been diagnosed with hyperparathyroidism. Which of the following complications is Mrs. F at highest risk of developing? A. Hyponatremia. B. Hypocalcemia. C. Hypermagnesemia. D. Hypercalcemia. Correct answer, D. Hypercalcemia. The parathyroid glands are responsible for regulating calcium, vitamin D, and phosphorus in the body. A person diagnosed with hyperparathyroidism produces too much parathyroid hormone, which causes the body to remove excess calcium from the bones to be moved to the bloodstream. This results in elevated levels of blood calcium, or hypercalcemia. 42. A client has entered disseminated intravascular coagulation, DIC, after becoming extremely ill after surgery. Which of the following laboratory findings would the nurse expect to see with this client? A. Elevated fibrinogen level. B. Prolonged PT, C. Elevated platelet count. D. Depressed D-dimer level. Correct answer, B. Prolonged PT. A client who has entered DIC may have a prolonged prothrombin time, PT. The PT is a measure of how quickly blood can clot. A prolonged PT indicates that blood is clotting slowly, contributing to increased bleeding associated with DIC. 43. A school nurse is providing care for a student who had injured his left ankle on the playground. The student is rating pain a 6 out of 10. The nurse advises the student not to bear weight on his left ankle until he is assessed by a primary care provider. While the student waits for his mother to arrive, the school nurse applies ice to the ankle. This is a correct action by the nurse because cold, A, reduces bleeding. B, prevents swelling. C, relaxes muscle. D, reduces blood flow. Correct answer, D, reduces blood flow. Cold therapy should be used in the first 24 to 48 hours following a traumatic injury, active bleeding, and non-inflammatory edema because it causes vasoconstriction. Vasoconstriction ultimately reduces blood flow to the site thus reducing swelling. 44. A nurse is caring for a client with aeroboflavinosis. Which of the following foods should the nurse serve this client? It's citrus fruits. B. Milk. C. Fish. D. Potatoes. Correct answer, B. Milk. Aeroboflavinosis is a vitamin B2 deficiency. The client may develop cracks around the mouth, inflammation of the tongue, or sensitivity to light. The nurse should serve foods that are good sources of vitamin B2, including milk, liver, green vegetables, or whole grains. 45. A client is taking a walk down the hallway when she suddenly realizes that she needs to use the restroom. Although she tries to make it to the bathroom on time, she is incontinent of urine before reaching the toilet. What type of incontinence does this situation represent? A. Reflex incontinence. B. Urge incontinence. C. Total incontinence. D. Functional incontinence. Correct answer. D. Functional incontinence. Functional incontinence occurs when a client develops an urge to void but may not be able to reach the toilet in time. Functional incontinence may be related to conditions that cause the client to forget bladder sensation until the last minute, such as cognitive changes, or the client may have mobility problems that prevent her from reaching the bathroom in time. 46. Which of the following is part of client teaching regarding anti-embolism stockings? A. Instruct the client to roll the top portion of the stocking down if it is too long. B. Stockings are applied with the toes uncovered at the end. C. Measure for thigh-high stockings from the foot to the knee. D. Stockings are to be smooth from end to end without wrinkles. Correct answer. D. Stockings are to be smooth from end to end without wrinkles. Antiembolism stockings are often applied for clients who have surgery or those with mobility problems. Antiembolism stockings reduce the chance of blood clot formation in the legs. 
When applying the stockings, the nurse should teach the client that the stockings should be free from wrinkles from end to end, as wrinkles can impair circulation. 47. A nurse is providing. Discharge instructions to a 15-year-old female following a left fibula fracture. The physician has written the discharge instructions as partial weight bearing for two weeks and must use crutches for all transferring for one week until Walker is fit by physical therapy. The patient indicates she has understood the instructions when she states the following. A. I should support my body weight on my right leg. B. I can adjust the crutches once I get home if they do not feel right. C. I should place my crutches on my right side when getting out of the chair. D. My elbows should be flexed at 45 degrees when using my crutches. Correct answer. C. I should place my crutches on my right side when getting out of the chair. The patient should be instructed to place the crutches on their strong side when rising up from a chair. They should also be instructed to support their body weight on the hand grips of the crutches and flex their elbows at 30 degrees. Additionally, crutches should never be altered at home once they have been fit for the patient. 48. Which of the following may be a cultural barrier that impacts a nurse's ability to provide care or education to the client? A. A nurse offers educational materials to a client that are written at an 8th grade reading level. B. A Vietnamese woman wants to use steaming in addition to her prescription antibiotics. C. A nurse uses pantomime to explain a procedure to a deaf client. D. A Native American client requests a healing ritual before he will consider surgery. Correct answer. C. A nurse uses pantomime to explain a procedure to a deaf client. Cultural barriers can impede communication, preventing the nurse from providing education or instruction about a client's care. Cultural barriers may be subtle or obvious, however, the nurse may not always know the various practices and beliefs performed by other cultures. Pantomiming instructions to a deaf person implies that the nurse does not recognize the importance of a sign language interpreter. This barrier is likely to cause miscommunication if the client does not understand the nurse's gestures and actions. 49. Which of the following is an example of low health literacy skills? A. A nurse's aide cannot calculate the correct full rate for ringer's lactate. B. A client cannot read an admission form to sign it. C. The nurse is unable to explain the dose, indications, side effects, and structural formula of carbamazepine. D. A client does not understand the treatment for his cholecystectomy. Correct answer. D. A client does not understand the treatment for his cholecystectomy. Some clients or families have low health literacy skills, rendering them unable to understand the reasons for health treatments or diagnoses or to make informed decisions about health care. Low health literacy differs from literacy skills in that reading and writing abilities are not necessarily reflective of understanding medical terminology. 50. A nurse is caring for an inpatient client in the hospital who is from another country and who fasts for temporary periods in order to promote his own spiritual growth. The nurse responds by saying, you need to eat something while you are here. Food and proper nutrition is extremely important for your health. What social philosophy is the nurse demonstrating? A. Ethnocentrism B. Relativism C. Stereotyping D. Xenocentrism Correct answer, A. Ethnocentrism Ethnocentrism is a concept that believes a person's own cultural practices are superior to all others. Ethnocentrism does not accept other practices as being valid, but instead insists that certain beliefs are better or correct for all people. In this case, the nurse was unable to see past her own set of beliefs about healthcare to understand why the client did not want to eat. 51. A nurse is using active listening as a form of therapeutic communication when she uses humor to put the client at ease in a situation. B. She restates what the client said in slightly different words. C. She uses eye contact and maintains an open stance while the client is talking. D. She provides personal information to show the client she can relate to him. Correct answer. 
See, she uses eye contact and maintains an open stance while the client is talking. Active listening is a form of therapeutic communication in which the nurse encourages a client to speak or share his thoughts. Some clients may be uncomfortable discussing their care, their thoughts, or feelings with nurses, however, nurses can encourage this dialogue by maintaining eye contact and keeping an open stance that indicates listening, rather than trying to work and talk at the same time. 52. A client asks a nurse, Do you think I should move back home after this procedure? and the nurse responds by saying, do you think you should move back home? What type of therapeutic communication is the nurse representing? A. Observation B. Reflection C. Summarizing D. Validating Correct answer, B. Reflection When using reflection after a client asks a question, the nurse turns the conversation around so that the client considers his own answers to the question. Reflection often involves restating a statement or question so that it is directed from the nurse to the client, rather than the other way around. This requires the client to reconsider his own question or thoughts about a situation. 53. A nurse walks into a client's room to find the nursing assistant yelling, sit back down or I won't help you eat and then you will starve. This type of behavior is known as psychological abuse. B. Abandonment C. Material exploitation D. Physical abuse Correct answer, A. Eh, psychological abuse This behavior is classified as psychological abuse. This type of abuse harms another person through words or threats. The person instilling the abuse may yell, harass, call names, threaten, or humiliate another person. In this situation, the nursing assistant was exercising control over the client by using psychological abuse to threaten him. 54. A nurse is talking to the daughter of a patient who just passed away following complications of a motor vehicle accident. The toxicology results reveal the patient's blood alcohol content was 2.0. The daughter states, my dad has missed every softball game of my daughter's this year and now he is gone. I cannot believe he would be so stupid as to drink and drive. Which of the following statements by the nurse would facilitate mourning? A. The silver lining is that your dad didn't kill anybody else. B. It will be okay, it seems as you have a strong support system to get through this. C. Is your daughter going to be okay? D. I can sense you're angry. That is a normal response to this situation. Do you want to tell me more about how you are feeling? Correct answer, D. I can sense you're angry. That is a normal response to this situation. Do you want to tell me more about how you are feeling? This statement by the nurse is an example of therapeutic communication. The response names the feeling the client is exhibiting and opens up the lines of communication with an open-ended question. In this situation, the nurse wants to avoid any responses that takes away from the grieving family member, offers false reassurance, changes the subject, or is advice. 55. A nurse is examining a woman who has bruises on her face and back in various stages of healing. The client states, sometimes he just gets so angry. Which of the following statements is most appropriate as a response from the nurse? A. Do you mean your boyfriend? B. You need to leave him as soon as possible. C. No one will ever hurt you again. D. Tell me more about what happens when he gets angry. Correct answer. D. Tell me more about what happens when he gets angry. The nurse assessing this client should try to derive more information from her before making a judgment or decision. Additionally, the nurse should find out more details of the situation, such as whom the client is talking about or what happens when he gets angry, and she should not give advice or make false promises. 56. A nurse is caring for a dying client whose family wants to be with him in the operating suite. The surgeon, however, does not allow families to be present during surgery. The nurse recognizes this as an ethical dilemma. What is the initial step of the nurse when managing this situation? A. Contact the physician to amend the order for the client. 
B. Document an account of the situation to ensure adequate coverage of details. C. Consult with the Medical Ethics Committee to determine a safe and workable solution. D. Speak with the Chief Nursing Officer to change the policy governing the situation. Correct answer. Contact the physician to amend the order for the client. In this type of situation, the first action of the nurse should be to ask the physician to make a change based on the circumstances. While documentation and consulting with higher authorities may be necessary eventually, the first step is to try to meet the needs of the client with the potentially short time allotted. 57. A physician may assess turgor when a. Iron deficiency is suspected. b. Heart and lung issues are suspected. c. Dehydration is suspected. d. None of the above. Correct answer. c. Dehydration is suspected. Skin turgor is assessed when dehydration is expected. The skin is slightly pinched and the amount of time that the skin takes to reassume the normal position is related to a patient's level of hydration. The longer the skin stays folded in the pinched position, the better the chance the patient is dehydrated. 58. When performing an EKG, the patient starts to laugh out of feelings of anxiety. What would you expect the EKG to show? Choose the best answer. A. Increased pulse rate, normal EKG. B. Decreased pulse rate, abnormal EKG. C. Tachycardia, poor EKG graph. D. Bradycardia, poor EKG graph. Correct answer. C. Tachycardia, poor EKG graph. Patients who are Unable to lie still on the exam table while having an EKG will have poor readouts on the EKG. Electrical signals given off by large moving muscles will inhibit the collection of data from the chest leads. Patients who are very anxious will usually display a rapid heartbeat. 59. When printing out an EKG, a nurse notices that the QRS complexes are extremely small. What should be the next step? A. Alert the physician immediately as this is a sign of impending cardiac arrest. B. Check to see that all leads are attached and rerun the EKG. C. Increase the sensitivity control to 20 mm deflection. D. Decrease the run speed to 50. Correct answer. C. Increase the sensitivity control to 20 mm deflection. Increasing the sensitivity control to 20 mm will double the sensitivity which will allow for better observation of the small QRS complexes. 60. Each small square on the EKG paper is 4 seconds long and 5 mm tall. B. 2 seconds long and 5 mm tall. C. 4 seconds long and 20 mm tall. D. 4 seconds long and 1 mm tall. Correct answer, D, 4 seconds long and 1 mm tall. Each small square of the EKG paper represents 0.04 seconds long and 1 mm tall. One large square will be 5 small squares long and 5 small squares tall, equating to 0.2 seconds long and 5 mm tall, 0.5 mv. 61. A patient's urine specimen tested positive for bilirubin. Which of the following is most true? A. The patient should be evaluated for kidney disease. B. The specimen was probably left at room temperature for more than two hours. C. The specimen is positive for bacteria. D. The specimen should be stored in an area protected from light. Correct answer. D. The specimen should be stored in an area protected from light. Bilirubin is easily broken down by light so all samples testing positive for bilirubin should be protected from light exposure. Any urine samples that are brown in color should be suspect for the presence of bilirubin. 62. Which vacutainer tubes should be used when a requisition calls for blood to be drawn for an HNH and glucose test? A. One light blue, one red. B. Two lavenders. C. One lavender, one gray. D. 1 green, 1 red. Correct answer. C. 1 lavender, 
one gray. And HNH stands for hemoglobin and hematocrit, which are tests that are found in a complete blood count. These tests are drawn in a lavender tube. Blood for glucose testing is drawn into gray tubes. 63. Specific gravity in urinalysis compares the concentration of urine to that of distilled water. B is useless when the patient is dehydrated. C can only be done with a refractometer. D none of the above. Correct answer compares the concentration of urine to that of distilled water. Specific gravity measures the concentration of solutes in a liquid compared to the concentration of distilled water. Normal specific gravity readings of human urine range from 1.005 to 1.030. 64. When placing a patient in the AP position for an X-ray, what position would the patient be in? A. Facing the film. B. Right side against the film. C. Left side against the film. D. Facing away from the film. Correct answer. D. Facing away from the film. The AP position is the anteroposterior projection. Patients in the AP position are facing away from the X-ray film. 65. A patient's urine tests positive. For glucose. The doctor asks you to confirm this finding. Which of the following would best confirm this finding? A. Run the urine on the handheld glucometer. B. Have another MA do a repeat dipstick. C. Run a clinic test. D. Run an ACE test. Correct answer. C. Run a clinic test. Clinic test tablets are used to detect glucosuria. This test is useful when urines are discolored and proper color assessment cannot be done. Safety and Infection Control 66 When teaching a patient to use the three-point gait technique of crutch use, the injured leg moves ahead at the same time as both crutches. B. One crutch moves at a time and then followed by the injured leg. C. Both crutches move ahead at the same time followed by both legs at the same time. D. None of the above are correct. Correct answer. The injured leg moves ahead at the same time as both crutches. A three-point gait is used when patients cannot bear total weight on one of the legs. The injured leg will move ahead with both crutches followed by the uninjured leg. 67. A nurse enters a client's room and finds her lying on the floor near the bathroom door. As the nurse provides assistance, the client states, I thought I could get up on my own. What information must the nurse document in this situation? A. A statement explaining the condition the client was found in, quoting the client's words about the situation. B. An explanation of how the fall happened and when the physician was notified. C. An account of the conditions of the room that contributed to the client's fall. D. A description of the client's condition and the reasons why she should have had assistance to the bathroom. Correct answer. A. The statement explaining the condition the client was found in, quoting the client's words about the situation. When a fall or injury occurs while under nursing care, the nurse should carefully document the known aspects of the situation, as well as her response to the injury. In this case, the nurse did not actually witness the client falling, but can quote the client's response to the situation. Listing events that potentially cause the fall implies blame on the parties involved and should be avoided. 68. A nurse is performing an end-of-shift count of narcotics kept in the locked cabinet. The narcotic log states there should be 26 oxycodone pills left, but there are only 24 in the drawer. What is the first action of the nurse? A. Perform the count again. B. Contact the pharmacy to determine if the narcotic log is incorrect. C. Check with the last nurse to sign out narcotics from the system. D. Notify the house supervisor that narcotic medications are missing. Correct answer. A. Perform the count again. Before notifying other personnel or filing a report, the nurse should initially perform the count again. If the nurse is the only one checking the narcotic count, there could be a miscount the first time that might require a repeated calculation. 
69. Which of the following is an example of whistleblowing? A. A nurse contacts administration about a colleague who takes supplies to use for a mission trip. B. A client sues a nurse because she failed to call the physician about his wound infection. C. A nursing assistant calls for help when a client falls out of bed. D. A client developed a sacral pressure ulcer when he was not turned in bed for over four hours. Correct answer. A. A nurse contacts administration about a colleague who takes supplies to use for a mission trip. Whistleblowing involves notifying administration or a supervisor about activities taking place that are unethical or illegal. Nurses who act as whistleblowers may be reluctant to speak up because of fear of reproach from colleagues or the consequences of their actions on the person acting unjustly. 70. A teacher brings a five-year-old child to the school nurse because of a bruise under her eye. When asked about the bruise, the child responds, My daddy did it. What is the nurse's initial action in this situation? A. Allow the child to return to class and monitor for future events that are suggestive of abuse. B. Call the parent and request an explanation for the bruises. C. Call the police and ask for a warrant for the parent's arrest. D. Notify the school administrator. Correct answer. D. Notify the school administrator. When faced with a potentially abusive situation in the school setting, the school nurse's initial response is to contact her supervisor, such as the principal or school administrator. Together, the nurse and administrator can contact the appropriate authorities to properly report the findings based on state requirements. 71. Which of the following accurately reflects the order of discharge slash relocation under the criteria for discharge slash relocation of patients? A. Ambulatory patients that require minimal care are discharged last because they need the least amount of care. B. Patients that require assistance are after more unstable patients. C. Patients who are unstable are discharged first because resources cannot be spent on unstable patients. D. Patients who are ambulatory and require minimal care must be discharged slash relocated first. Correct answer. D. Patients who are ambulatory and require minimal care must be discharged slash relocated first. Patients who are ambulatory and require minimal care are discharged slash relocated first. Secondly, patients who require assistance are discharged and plans for their care elsewhere are made. Lastly, patients who are unstable are not discharged unless they are in danger. 72. OSHA has very strict standards for hospital employees who may encounter hazardous materials or patients who have been exposed to them. These regulations include all of the following except respiratory protection must be provided to all employees who might be exposed. B. Training on respiratory protection must be provided. C. Employers must provide personal protective equipment to all employees. D. All ED personnel must be trained in decontamination procedures. Correct answer. D. All ED personnel must be trained in decontamination procedures. All ED personnel should have first responder awareness of hazmat situations but may or may not be trained in decontamination procedures. However, any ED employee who will be participating in decontamination must be trained in the process. Case Studies Case Study 2 A 14-year-old client is brought to the emergency department by her parents. The parents report the client has no medical history but has been experiencing weight loss over the past two weeks, nausea, and overall reports feeling unwell. Exhibit 1, Nursing Assessment, 1924. Neurological Assessment, Alert and Oriented, Perla, GCS 15, Generalized Weakness Bilateral Upper and Lower Extremities, Full Sensation, Denies Numbness Slash Tingling. Cardiac, Tachycardia. S1-S2 auscultated, no edema noted. Integumentary, skin is pale, warm, and dry, tenting skin turgor, peripheral pulses plus 2, capillary refill less than 2 seconds, dry mucous membranes. Respiratory, tachypnea noted, deep respirations, clear lung sounds bilaterally, no cough noted. Gastrointestinal, 
nausea and vomiting present, generalized abdominal pain, denies diarrhea. Genitourinary, reports polyuria. 73. Which of the following conditions should the nurse be concerned about after assessing the client? A. Hypervolemia. B. Hypoglycemia. C. Diabetic ketoacidosis. D. Asthma exacerbation. Correct answer. C. Diabetic ketoacidosis. The nurse should be concerned that the client is exhibiting signs and symptoms of diabetic ketoacidosis. DKA is more commonly seen in clients with type 1 diabetes, but it can also be seen in clients diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Although type 1 diabetes can occur at any age, it commonly occurs in ages 4 years old to 7 and ages 10 to 14. The client does not have a medical history, but the client may have a new onset diagnosis of diabetes. Diabetic ketoacidosis occurs when the client becomes hyperglycemic, becomes metabolic acidotic, and has an increased production of ketones. It is the result of not enough insulin and the production of glucose from the liver and kidneys. Classic signs and symptoms include cosmol respirations, which are characterized by rapid and deep breathing in an attempt to expel CO2 and compensate for metabolic acidosis. In addition to Kuzmal respirations, nausea, vomiting, weight loss, and polyuria are all signs and symptoms that point to DKA. Answer A is incorrect. Hypervolemia is an excess amount of fluid in the intravascular space. The client has been experiencing nausea and vomiting, which would concern the nurse for a loss of fluid, not an excess of fluid. In addition, there are clinical indications the client is dehydrated, such as tenting skin turgor and dry mucous membranes, as well as the report of polyuria. These findings concern the nurse for dehydration and hypovolemia. Hypovolemia occurs when there is insufficient volume in the intravascular space and can result from a fluid shift or fluid loss. Answer D is incorrect. The client has an abnormal respiratory assessment and is tachypneic. However, the lung sounds are clear. In asthma, the bronchioles become inflamed, and there is an increase in mucus production in the airway, resulting in wheezing heard during auscultation. The asthmatic may also be coughing in an attempt to clear their airway. This client's lung sounds are clear, indicating to the nurse another pathology is occurring. 74. Which of the following actions should the nurse anticipate to take? Select all that apply. F. Checking a blood glucose level. B. Obtaining an ECG. C. Document daily output. D. Monitor vitals every 4 hours. Correct answer, both A and B. After identifying the client as a possible new onset diabetic in the DKA, the nurse should anticipate checking a blood glucose level as one of the tests necessary to confirm the diagnosis. The nurse obtaining an ECG and placing the client on the cardiac monitor is important. Hyperkalemia commonly accompanies hyperglycemia, and an ECG will reflect any conduction issues due to an elevated potassium level. The nurse needs to continue cardiac monitoring in case any conduction issues occur. Answer C is incorrect. The nurse does not document daily output. Instead, the nurse documents strict hourly intake and output. Monitoring the intake and output closely will help determine the client's hydration status and ensure adequate volume resuscitation. Assessing the output daily will not allow the nurse to intervene quickly enough if the client's urine output is not adequate, indicating insufficient fluid resuscitation. Answer D is incorrect. Monitoring the client's vital signs every 4 hours is not frequent enough for a newly presenting client in DKA. The nurse monitors the client's vital signs every 15 minutes until treatment begins and the client is determined to be hemodynamically stable. 75. Exhibit 2, Laboratory Values, 2014 Clients Laboratory Values, Serum Glucose 524 mg per deciliter, Serum pH 7.23, Sodium 131 milliequivalent L, 
HCO 39 milli equivalent slash L BUN 36 mg per deciliter, creatinine 1.9 mg per deciliter, urine ketones positive. Expected range, serum glucose non-fasted 70 to 200 mg slash DL, serum pH 7.35, 7.45, sodium 135 to 145 milli equivalent slash L, HCO 322 to 29 milli equivalent slash L, BUN 6 to 24 mg slash DL, creatinine for women, 0.59 to 1.04 mg per deciliter, urine ketones negative. The nurse reviews the client's laboratory values. The nurse should anticipate the healthcare provider to order which of the following for this client. A. For bicarbonate. B. Subcutaneous insulin. C. Oral glucagon. D. For 0.9% sodium chloride. Correct answer. D. For 0.9% sodium chloride. The client in DKA needs a careful fluid and electrolyte balance. The client is already displaying signs and symptoms of hypovolemia. Therefore, the nurse anticipates for fluid resuscitation at 15 to 20 milliliters per kilogram per hour during the first hour. For fluids are infused more slowly, 7 to 14 ml slash kg slash hr, over the next 24 hours. The first type of fluid initiated is 0.9% sodium chloride. The type of fluids chosen afterward will depend on a variety of factors, including the client's electrolytes, blood pressure, and urinary output. Answer A is incorrect. For sodium bicarbonate is avoided except in severe acidosis, a pH less than 7.0. Metabolic acidosis will be corrected as the client is treated with 4-insulin. Answer B is incorrect. The client needs 4-insulin, not subcutaneous insulin. The client is in DKA. The client's glucose is elevated, the pH reflects acidosis, and the serum bicarbonate is low. In addition, the client's urine tested positive for ketones. Subcutaneous insulin has a slower onset when compared to 4-insulin. Subcutaneous insulin is started when ketosis has stopped. Answer C is incorrect. The nurse does not administer oral glucagon. Glucagon is a medication used to treat hypoglycemia, not hyperglycemia. Congratulations! You have completed the test. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more resources.